Hi, everybody. It is Eamon here from Patmonk Presents with another podcast. And joining us all the way from Philadelphia, we have today the founder of Blue Tusker. Andrew, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Appreciate you having me. No problem. You're very, very welcome. And for those who are listening in, I mean, can you give us uh, maybe a quick download on what Blue Tusker does? So, you know, how you help people and help businesses? Yeah. So we are a full service marketing company for e-commerce sellers. We Mm. focus on basically being an outsourced marketing department for a lot of the sellers we work with. And we help develop omni-channel strategies for them, mostly for sellers that sell on their own website, as well as marketplaces like Amazon, Walmart, eBay, Wayfair, et cetera. Fantastic. Fantastic. And you know, when you're dealing with all these different platforms, I mean, how are you getting the word out there at the moment? Is it inbound? Is it outbound? Is it YouTube or LinkedIn? Or what seems to be working at the moment? Most of what we do uh, mm-hmm. is... Well, when we first started, it was definitely a really, very strong SEO approach. It was like one of the first things I did was start writing as much content as we possibly could with a strong focus on the SEO side. Now, as things moved on, uh, we've started to do more visualized content. Like I have my own podcast. We do uh, a lot of like webinars. I have different like we do like tutorial videos and things like that. So really anything we can do from a content side. But otherwise, it's mostly outbound, uh, inbound right now. Okay. Okay. And with that as well, when you're, let's say you're getting the inbound, I mean, how important is your website at you know taking all these visitors and converting them into potential customers or happy customers in the future? It's obviously the basically the main part. Um, you know, with an agency, I think the biggest struggle is there's so many of us. There's you know, it's difficult to stand out as an agency because unless you can truly easily differentiate yourself on your website. It just looks like another agency site. You got services, you claim to be the best of the best. It's the same stuff. So our site, we really have to make sure that not only do we come off as a thought leader in our industry, but also clarifying like what our true differentiators are. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, it's so important because if you're in the sea of everybody saying like, we're number one, we're number one. We're great. Uh, Everyone's number one. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to get lost in the noise uh, of all of that. And I mean, with this as well, I mean, if there was an area, let's say with the website, what you're doing at the moment, uh, what, since you founded the company, why are you doing better now than maybe you were doing five or 10 years ago? Um. One of the things that we started focusing on really from an SEO side, so obviously, you know, you write all this content, you get all this traffic in, but if you're writing articles that are a little bit more generalized, like the chances of those actually converting someone are slim. So then you have to rely on any kind of like retargeting advertising you might have running, but a lot of agencies don't like to go down the advertising route. Mm -hmm. So what we actually started to do is take a real strong look at the way that those articles we were creating are structured so that they're actually showcasing a lot more of not only like case studies and fun stuff like that, but different pieces of gated content, different ways for them to get to different pages to learn about things. So we focused a lot more on the CRO side of the actual articles that we're writing. And then of course, making sure that for every individualized service that we may have or offer that we may have or whatever it is, it all has its own page. So it's very specific around what the offer is and what we have. So really we've taken a real strong look at the overall CRO of our site, which has allowed us to actually start to convert those leads, whether it's from a marketing qualified lead because they're gated content or something like that, or whether it's a true lead that's coming in from like a contact form or chat or something along those lines. No, no, that makes that makes perfect sense. And it, like I can see why that's getting results. And uh, and to kind of switch gears a little bit and talk about more of you as a leader and obviously the founder of the company. I mean, what keeps you busy on a day-to-day basis, uh Blue Tusker? What? What keeps me busy? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh what a loaded question. Um when you're not podcasting oh, and doing all I know, right? Yeah, when I'm not doing everything. <laughs> um, you know, we're, uh, we're still a small team. There's, I think 15 of us on, I never say in-house anymore cause we're all remote, but I guess in-house quote unquote. And then we have like 20 or 30 contractors. So I'm still in, still in the business a little bit more than I'd like to be. Um, but when I'm not, a lot of my time is focused on building out our own marketing side, starting to develop a lot more different, like kind of funnel structures. We have just now started to kind of play with the whole paid advertising side, just because I got curious and I kind of wanted to practice what I preach. So I've started to really kind of look into building out our own funnels and what kind of different offers we can have. 
And we just got back into doing like live events and webinars and kind of expanding on the podcast. So that's a little bit more of the direction I've started to head in lately. Fantastic. And it's good. I mean, uh, I guess, you know, a year or two ago, like there was no events. It's great to see finally events pretty much back to normal now. Yeah, whole, exactly. COVID uh, <laughs> and all that happening. So look, what I want to do is uh, if you're ready, maybe I uh, put you in the hot seat and, and ask you some rapid fire questions. If you're good. Let's do it. Hit me. Let's do it. Let's do it. So um, like, for example, Andrew, what was the last book you read or maybe currently reading? Ooh, uh, messy middle. I, I've started and, and not finished that book, I think twice. And this time I'm like, no, I'm finishing it. So I'm, I'm, I, this time I am finishing because I only got like a handful of chapters left, but that's, that's basically what I've been focused on right now to try to figure out, like, you know, you get the agency, you get to that certain point and then you just kind of feel like you flatlined and I want to figure out like, how do I scale it out? So I've definitely started uh, digging back into that book. Very good. Very good. First time I've heard of that, but great title, Messy Middle. It makes me like, <laughs> makes you think. Oh, it's great. Yeah, definitely about scaling and thing is good. So with this as well, like why is one problem that maybe kind of, if there was no boundaries in technologies and you could snap your fingers, I mean, what is one thing that you would like to have fixed in the company today? Or maybe it's something that's taking up a lot of time and that you could automate. What would that be? Oh man, that's a good one. I'm going to have to go with the first thing that came to my head would be <clears throat> some kind of visualization around attribution tends to be our, our biggest problem. Cause like from an agency, like, you know, it, it's not a, we work with e-commerce sellers all day. So someone comes to your site, it's pretty easy to figure out if they're going to convert right away or if it's in the next like handful of days, but then that's it. But with an agency, it's, they come, they see a blog, then they leave, then maybe they come back and they check it out. And then maybe they download something. And then it's just such a long sales cycle that I'd love to have a little bit more eyes on the overall actual attribution of it. And obviously with the way that that's going now, and since the iOS changed and all that stuff, it's near impossible comparative, even if you use something like a triple whale or uh, I forgot what the other one's called. Um, but that would probably be more in the direct go go back to the good old days when i could track everything <laughs> <laughs> exactly and like like for example being the founder and yeah you're saying the good old days but with everything changing it like before we jumped on we we're speaking very briefly about ai and how that's having an impact on the industry i mean the event thing that you'd like to share on that uh, your thoughts because it's chat gdp it's everything that's yeah happening. <laughs> so you know, as as I keep kind of heading back to the agency thing, but specifically as an agency, I've always found that the agencies that end up failing are the ones that keep doing the same thing year in and year out and don't adjust to technology or platforms or anything. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as AI took off, we were like, OK, we've we've got to figure out looking into this. And we definitely dipped our toes into it. We didn't dive completely into it because I know like you do that kind of stuff with like you see horror stories with like crypto and NFTs. Like, uh, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> test it, but then that's it. Um, but we've started to really get into it from an SEO side. So in June, we're doing a big event on basically a complete walkthrough of how we leverage AI for everything around SEO for ourselves as well as for our clients. And what we've started to realize is like, there's a lot of capabilities that SEO, uh, I'm sorry, that AI has for SEO. But there's a lot of still nuances that need to be done manually. And we actually are going to go through the AI platforms that claim to be able to do that kind of stuff, but can't. And we're able to show like, here's why it actually doesn't work as well. And then the ones that claim to do certain things that do work. Mm -hmm. So going through keyword research, basic kind of stuff like that, and getting all the way into like actually writing content and whether it's read by AI or not, and whether you need to adjust it so you're not plagiarizing and how you have to link to those things. And so we're going to get real deep into that. Uh, so that event's going to be in mid to late June, and we'll be um, doing a whole deep dive into the AI side of SEO. Perfect. And where where can people find out about that event? Is it just going to the bluetusker.com website or is yep. there specific... Yeah, just head to our website. We're gonna plaster it everywhere. <laughs> so you <laughs> can't <that>. miss it. <laughs> Great. No, no, that sounds super interesting. I'm sure that a lot of people listening in will find something like that definitely applicable for, for what they're doing. Um, so definitely check that out. Also, what I'd like to do is imagine you could go back and it's your first day, you know, as a founder. You know, if you were in your first day, your first month, your first year, all over again, what would you do differently? Or what advice would you give yourself? 
if you're starting all over again? Oh man, so many things. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I think one of the things I would have done a little bit differently now, like we've kind of powered through it and it is what it is, but we're full service. So we act as an, a completely outsourced marketing department. I have a whole SEO team and then I have a paid ads team and social mm -hmm. team. So like it's very, it's like an agency of agencies. Mm -hmm. And so while that model has now started to work really well, mm -hmm. getting to here was a chore. And what I probably should have done was taken a real strong focus on like one or two services and then start to branch into the other services until we got to this model. So it was a bit of a, an uphill battle getting it to here. Uh, but now we've kind of powered through it. So it is what it is, but it probably would have saved me a little bit of stress over the past couple of years. There we go. There we go. So some good advice for people if you're <laughs> at the beginning stages. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, thank you so much for being on with us today, Andrew. I want to give you the final word. I mean, people will forget everything that we just spoke about. And you want to leave, <laughs> leave them with one point about Blue Tusker. I mean, what would that be? Oh, about us. Uh, well, if I'm speaking to a potential client, it would be more around, we we really do act as like a partner to our clients. Like we're embedded in them. We've got them all set up in Slack. We have all the different, like we're basically as if you were to hire one person that came with 15 that can just do everything from a marketing side. So from an e-commerce perspective, we're embedded in that whole industry. And I've never been prouder of the team I've put together. I've been in agencies before and I know hands down, no questions asked, this is the one. Uh, from other agencies, uh, I would probably tell them, uh, geez, take a deep breath, man. <laughs> it's not, everything's <laughs> going to go the way you want it to. Uh, you know, sometimes you really get upset because one thing's not working one way. And the one thing I've learned, especially from the e-commerce side, but every business, every business owner, and then in our case, every product and every product category, or if you're whoever you're working with, every service is completely different. It's provided differently. So for you to template an agency approach is just BS. You just can't do it that way. But sometimes it just doesn't align because you can't control the way that that business is run or the way that that owner wants to run it. And so if you lose a client here and there, like don't stress over it. It's fine. It happens. It's life. It is what it is. And, uh, you know, the agency life is, is interesting. I think my next life, I'm going to start a therapist for just agency <laughs> owners. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Well, it's good to to have that foresight. And thank you so much for sharing and taking the time to join us, Andrew. I'm like, I'm sure you could be doing a million different things. We really appreciate it. I'm sure our listeners will get a lot of value. So appreciate that. So that is it for yeah. today's episode of Pat Monk Presents. And I look forward to seeing everybody on the next episode. So for myself and Andrew, all the best and bye-bye. Appreciate it.